Uh, we thank the Lord for this wonderful morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity. And actually, every time I say it is a privilege to serve the Lord, this is not a sacrifice, it's a privilege. And uh, most of the times, people think that it is a uh, it is a burden. It's not a burden. We are honored to serve the Lord uh, and that he has chosen us to preach the gospel to the all nation. My name is Pastor Jonah Mohammed from Marsabit Pentecostal Church. I'm married, blessed with, the, with one son, and I thank the Lord for that. Uh, today I want to share about uh, a call for a watchman. A call for a watchman. And uh, we are going to read from the book of uh, Prophet Ezekiel, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 8. And uh, before we do that, I'd just like us to begin with the word of prayer. Uh, let us close our eyes as we go before the Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us, O God. It is a privilege to serve you. Thank you for choosing me today as a vessel of honor. So to stand before your people and uh, to share your word with them, O oh God. Father, I pray that you'll give me strength. Let the power of Holy Spirit take place, O oh God. I decrease so that you may increase, O oh Lord. Speak to each and every one of us. Receive all the honor and glory. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Can we all say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse, eight, verse 1 to 8, He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation, that he rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. Verse 4. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid, though brass and thorns are all around you, and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of what they say, nor terrified by them, though they are rebellious house. Verse 7. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. The last verse, eight, but you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like the rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Today, I want to speak about a call of, uh, for a watchman. This man, Ezekiel, was one of a younger man taken to Babylon in captivity in 597 BC, that, is, that was the first century. Ezekiel was a Hebrew, a priest, and a, and a prophet. Actually, the name of Ezekiel means God strengthens. Ezekiel chapter 1 from verse 28b to Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 15 Ezekiel receives a commission from God to go to the rebellious house of the Israel and to speak for God. Not to speak for himself, but to speak for God. So it was the mouthpiece of God. God called him to this ministry. And according to the studies, Ezekiel was called to ministry when he was 30 years that means that you cannot be a priest when you are not 30 years. So the Spirit of the Lord came to Ezekiel and told him to stand up. 
So this is the calling. So when God appeared to Ezekiel, he sent his spirit. When the spirit came, Ezekiel stood up. I want to ask you a question before we, we, we proceed. When we are talking about calling, call from where? And call to where? Where were you? Where are you? Where are you going? This is a very important question that we should ask ourselves. So Ezekiel was sent to Israelites, to an obstinate nation, to, to a rebellious people, to people who are very stubborn. And this is the kind of message that Ezekiel was carrying. What was the message? When we read in verse 4, the Lord told Ezekiel, the people to whom I'm sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. So the message is what the sovereign Lord says. And we are going to look what is that that the Lord is speaking to the children of Israel, to this rebellious nation, to these people who are very stubborn. Number one, God was warning them in his grace. He, was, he knew that these people are rebellious. He knew that these people, they are stubborn and they are obstinate. They are stiff naked. So by his grace, he was sending Ezekiel as a prophet to them so that he will warn them. So that he will give them chance to come up again to that relationship to that intimacy with their God. God still wants the rebels to change. He gave them another chance to live, another chance to have that relationship. So, I want to ask you, will we write them off as hopeless? Why are we stubborn sometimes? So the message was that they need to understand God Sometimes God is bitter. <laughs> Sometimes God is sweet. This is something that the Israelites needed to understand. Look what they said. He told them, for they are impudent and stubborn children. I'm sending you to them. And you shall say to them, thus, say, thus says the Lord God. That was the message. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Sometimes when we go to preach to people, Sometimes when we give people message, we don't have to give people our message. We have to give message that is from the Lord. Praise be to the name of the Lord. So, he was sending Ezekiel to strengthen them. We don't want to apply this to ourselves sometimes. It is very difficult to receive such a hard task when God tells you to go and preach the gospel to people who are stubborn and God is telling you openly, that these people are stiff naked. These people are obstinate. But I'm sending you there. You need to go. It is a very hard choice. Sometimes we don't want to get out of our comfort. Because we have everything that we need. It is a very hard task for us to leave our comfort zone. And to go to a place where God is sending us. So it, it was a very tough decision for Ezekiel. And God was telling them, him, do not be like them. Thought they are obstinate. Thought they are rebellious. Thought these people are stiff naked. Don't be like them. Don't let them to confuse you. Don't mingle with them. Don't let them to mix you up so that you lose your goal. Do not be like them. So what did Ezekiel need to do? He had to eat the scroll that, 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 that God was giving him. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And it's like God was telling him, prepare to speak the truth. Just as it was written in the book of 1 Peter, uh, from chapter, chapter 3, from 10 to 18. So it is very important to consider all these things. So, the condition is, the condition that God gave Ezekiel is, whether they listen or not, whether they listen or not, you need to go. So it is a command that Ezekiel was given by God. Whether these people, they are going to listen to you. Whether they are not going to listen to you. You need to go to them. Why? 
In this manner, they will understand that the prophet is among them. What does a prophet mean? Is the mouthpiece of God, that God is speaking through his prophets. It is found in verse 5. The Bible says in verse 5, And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. A prophet is among them. So whether they listen or not is the condition. And God was telling Ezekiel not to fear. What is there to fear? Don't fear what they say. And he associated the Israelites as uh, scorpions, as thorns. Why? Because of the words. Because they used to mock the prophets of God. Because I remember, even in the book of Jeremiah, when Jeremiah was prophesying against Israelites, there were other prophets in the Israel who were prophesying good things while people were living in a doom life. So they were mocking Jeremiah. How can you prophesy against us? Why do you need to prophesy against us? Look at our houses. We have full of food. We have everything that we need. How can you say that the Lord will destroy us and he had blessed us? So it was in a, a time that the prophets of God, of God were being mocked. So God was telling Ezekiel not to fear what they are going to say. Sometimes God is sending you to a field. You have been mocked and you have been discarded. Sometimes you can even spirit, you can go spiritual, spiritually burn out. Let me tell you, do not fear what they are going to say because God is with you. And what was the command? You must speak. You must speak. It is found in verse 7. You must speak. The Bible says that you must speak. My words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. So God knew that these people, they are not going to listen. But let me tell you, just go and preach to them, whether they listen or not, because they already are a rebellious nation. So it is very important. So I want to say, what are the responsibilities of a watchman? What are the responsibilities of a watchman? Um, a watchman... Primarily, duty is to, number one, thwart illegal activity at his employer's property. Thwart illegal activity at his employer's property. Thwart means to prevent or to halt from being damaged or from being stolen. So, it is to thwart the activity. So, that is the number one responsibility of a, of a, of a watchman. So, as a watchman of God, just as Ezekiel that is our responsibility, to take care of God's people. God's people are the property of God. The Bible says that we do not belong to ourselves. We belong to God. And our bodies are the temple of Holy Spirit. So we contain the Holy Spirit. So we need to thwart every illegal activity that the devil is taking uh, to people. And number two, a watchman... He's armed. He's armed. So we as watchmen of God, we are armed. We are armed. What is our, 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 our instrument of war? It is the word of God. It is prayer. It is fasting. It is worshiping the Lord. This is our arm. So we are armed. And number three is that the watchman spend his shift stationary at a security desk or a mobile on patrol. Like now we can talk about church administration or we can talk about the missionaries who are in the field. So that's one of the responsibility of the watchman. And number five is that, uh, sorry, number four is that watchmen often wear uniforms. They often wear uniforms. We know that this person is a watchman with the attire that he has. For us, what is our uniform as a watchman of God? In the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13, the Bible says, Put on full armor of God. When the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Yes, put on full armor of God. That is our attire. That is 
That is our suit. That, that are our uniforms as a, as a watchman of God. And number five is that a watchman is outfitted with radios, alarms, cameras, and scanners. So what are the radios? Our radios are the Bible. The alarms are his Holy Spirit. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And the cameras and scanners are our prayer, our prayer life. So it is important for us as a man and women of God to receive this calling of a watchman. Let's see what Jesus talks about this. When we read from the book of uh, the gospel of Mark chapter 3 from verse 13 to 15. Jesus called his disciples and appointed them. He called them and appointed them. The Bible says in verse 13 that Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those who he wanted and they came to him. There are two things here to be understood. He called those he wanted and number two is they came to him. So when he went on, on the mountainside to pray, he called those whom he wanted and they listened to his voice and they came to him. So when today you are listening to this voice, wherever you are watching from, let me tell you, we need to accept this calling of a watchman. He chose those whom he wanted. The reason why you are here, you are chosen because God wants you to this service. God wants you to this ministry. That's why you are here today. And they came to him. They left everything they had. When we study the lives of the disciples of Jesus, when Jesus called them, they left everything and they followed Jesus. Praise be to the name of the Lord. This is the time for us. When Jesus calls us to this ministry, there are some things that we need to put aside. There is a perspective that we need to put aside. There is this attitude that we need to put aside to accept the calling of our Lord. Verse 14 says, He appointed them, designated them as apostles, that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Designated them as apostles, or he gave them assignment. So God is the one to give others gifts. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, to some he gave, he made, he called as apostles, to some pastors, to some evangelists, to some teachers, to some prophets. So he is the one to give gifts. He is the one to give assignment. But as for us, it is, it is to accept the calling as a watchman. Number two is that my, they might be with him, not only to practice on institution of various forms of ministry, but also it was for continuous association, not only performing miracles, not only going and making disciples. He chose them so that they will be with Jesus every time so that they will enjoy that relationship, so that they will enjoy that fatherly love, that intimacy, so that they will be with him every time, so they will enjoy the grace and the mercy. That's why he called them. And then he sent them out to preach. To preach what? To preach good news. Praise be to the name of the Lord. He called them, he designated them, gave them assignments. He was with them so that they can enjoy the relationship, the intimacy. And then when he equipped them, he sent them to preach the good news. Verse 15 says, to have authority then to cast out demons. So he gave them gifts, he gave them authority. And I remember Jesus saying that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So he gave his disciples the authority to cast out demons. So when we have association with God, we have the authority to even perform miracles and wonders. Praise be to the name of the Lord. So it is important. Sometimes we usually focus on discipleship. We usually focus on mission. But we forget that we need also as children of God to have that fatherly relationship with our Father. 
So it is important for us. Let us focus, children of God. Let us focus on evangelism. Let us hear and submit to the call of being a watchman. I know not everybody, not everybody who wants to maybe become a watchman. We want to be guarded. We want to be taken care of. But who will take care of others? I remember one time God was saying that in the book of Isaiah, whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? And then Isaiah told God in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, here I am, Lord, send me. I am here, O God. Use me as your vessel. And even today I know and I can feel that the Holy Spirit is convicting me that there is that same question that God was asking in the times of Isaiah. Whom shall I send? So there is this call for watchmen. God is calling for people. God is looking for that arm, for that person who will become a leg for the service of the Lord. For that person who will become an eye for the service of the Lord. God is looking for such people. Are we listening to the voice of God, children of God? Are we obedient? Are we obstinate like the Israelites? Are we stiff naked as the Israelites? Are we rebellious to hear the voice of the Lord when God sends his servants to us? Praise be to the name of the Lord. Sometimes we used to talk about the second coming of Christ. And I'm very sure there are some people who have never heard about the first coming of Christ. How can we tell them about the second coming of Christ? And they have not heard the first coming of Christ. So there is a need for missionaries. There are a need for evangelists. There are needs for preachers. One day I was reading a book of Reinhard Bonke and he was asking, how big is hell? How big is hell? <laughs> and he said that hell was created not for anyone but for devil and his angels. So our work is to make the hell empty and to make the heaven full. That is the joy of ministry. Praise be to the name of the Lord. And then, there is this question that Paul was asking in the book of Romans. I want to conclude with this. The book of Romans chapter 10 from verse 13 to 15. The word of God says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The question is, and how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Praise be to the Lord. So God is calling us today. We are watchmen of God. We have to hear the, this voice of the Lord as watchmen. You are watchman. I am a watchman. We are the vessel of honor. Let us pray for this word. Father, we thank you. Thank you for calling us to this ministry, O oh God. Sometimes we are very hard. We are very harsh. We are very stiff-necked, O oh God. Father, we pray that you will forgive us and you will give us a contrite spirit, O oh God. A humble spirit, a spirit that is broken before you so that we will have ears to listen to your voice and to obey your command. You told us to go and make disciples, O oh Lord. There are so many people who have not heard about gospel, O oh Lord. I pray that you will rise men and women of God who will stand in the gap. I remember your word that says, O oh God, for the field is great, but the laborers are few. Father, I pray that you will rise a generation, O oh God. A generation that preach good news 
to those souls that are lost, O oh God. Father, we pray that you'll help us. Open our eyes, open our ears, O oh God. Be with us. And always, O oh God, send your grace and mercy with us, O oh Jesus. We thank you. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we do pray and believe. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you and God bless you.